One of them wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. Welcome to Security Guy Radio. How are you? What's your name? My name is Steve Carney. Steve, what do you do? I'm the Senior Director, Product Management at Tyco Security Products. Now, I manage Ty video and integration platforms. Tyco's a huge name. A lot of levels, a lot of divisions. Specifically, you guys are in the security market. Yep. And what does is, what is Tyco do in the security market that's unique from other people? Well, first of all, we are the largest pure play fire and security company in the world. Really? Well, yes. that's interesting, okay. Uh, mo you know, there, there are plenty of other big names out there but those big names have automotive, aircraft parts, right. a whole variety of other things. We just handle security, video, access, intrusion, fire, uh, and integration. And I think that's important because I was talking to another integrator over here at our show, right? And some of these companies, they diversify so much that they're kind of losing their expertise. Right. It, they're pretty good at it, but they're not the best. And Tyco, of course, has reputation. If you say the word Tyco, everybody says, well, that's quality. That's good, it's going to work, you know. That's, that's what we focus on. So, is uh, migrating from IP video the big story in the market right now? I, I was talking to another guy who said, believe it or not, this is the first year, 2014, that IP cameras outsold analog. And I said, you mean replace it? He goes, no, outsold. And I found that kind of remarkable. Sure, so uh, <clears throat> you know, whether that happened in 2013 or 2014, uh, it happened far more recently than people would have expected. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that, you know, in our in our business, in security business, we're paid to protect things, and so uh, risk avoidance uh, is often uh, an underlying part of the decision making. And it took IP that long to overtake analog. So, you know, from a manufacturer standpoint, from a technology standpoint, yeah, it's you know, it's all about IP. But when you're looking at the customers in the field, that means a majority of those customers have analog today. Still do, right? Sure, because, holders, right, right. I mean. Yeah, the fact that it outsold doesn't mean that those analogs just disappeared. It'll right. get replaced, right. maybe a new new client. Absolutely, it, it did not disappear. So now, I'm old school, okay? So I had a computer in 1984, two floppy drives, I get it. And not, and, and by the way, the first cell phone I had at $2 a minute was better than the cell phone I got now, hearing-wise, all right? So advantage to old stuff, not on the network, can't be hacked, can't be compromised. And I think a lot of people in security which are, you know, tend to be managers five or six years behind technology, feel more comfortable with that. Because, of course, an IP camera can be hacked if you're not doing it right. So what do you guys do to address that issue with, with security inside? Because an IP camera is a computer, for lack of a better term, nowadays. Sure, and, uh, you know, the network is really the issue. The network is, the, is, the, is, the, is where hackers are going to get into, whether, right. the, you know, the one device or another is their entry point. It's the IP network that really needs to be secure. So it does change the paradigm as a manufacturer from being a product company to in part being a network security company. And we, we dedicate a lot of resources, uh, a lot of R&D energy around getting the highest levels of cert certification in that. So you know, for allowing our customers to be FISMA compliant, which is a, which is a US federal standard, uh, it's something we've invested a lot in. And when you are protecting military installations, right. nuclear installations, uh, you have to be at the highest point of that game. So you're right, it's a totally different ball game and that's a fun part about being in product management. It's always changing. Do you guys produce any analog cameras anymore? Sure, we do, oh, you know. absolutely. We do, right. we do uh, produce analog cameras. You know, being the, uh, the manufacturer of the Intellex, we still sell uh, quite a few, uh, but and those are primarily customers that have those products and continue to replace or expand. Uh, so we do sell analog. So we're shooting this on GoPro. We have the resolution race going on, right? Yep. How high can you go? This is 4K. When I first used it, I blew up my computer because the memory couldn't handle it, right? I can't even, I don't own a device that can play this back in 4K. And I saw somebody that said they had a 7K security camera. Uh, do we need it? Is it, <laughs> well, how high do we go? It's interesting. It's a fine line between need and want. Uh, I think it's a, it's a gimme. I want, I want, I want. Sure. I know that. I'm a big believer that expectations in our business lives are set from us as consumers in our personal lives. Oh, that's very interesting. We right. have, you know, I, I bet everybody here has a 16 by nine monitor on their desk. Right. You're doing email, 
you're doing spreadsheets, you're, you actually, there's no difference between four by three and 16 by nine, but everybody has it, why? Because when you go home, you're looking at a 16 by nine, 1080p screen, yeah. uh, watching whatever you're watching, and then you get to work and say, this looks old, this is antiquated, and that expectation now gets into your your business world. So I, I see that uh, on the on the resolution side as well. I don't think the resolutions arms race ever ends, frankly. Uh, it, it's all a matter of how well we can manage the content, manage the data, the storage, and the network impact. So uh, I, I don't. I think the sky is the limit. Storage is what I'm concerned about. I think we're going to run out of our ability to store all this content before the technology can compress it. Right. Uh, I mean, a, a gigabyte when I was at the studios was a concept. A gigabyte? Well, oh, there's a terabyte. A terabyte? What's that? Now we're what? Petabytes? I mean, how high can it go? So if we can't keep all this stuff stored and easily retrieved, uh, you know, do we slide backwards in our technology? It's very interesting. But I, at the resolution is so high. Uh, in the old days with an analog camera, you would see a picture of a guy walking out the door with your laptop, and for court it was useless. Right. Because you could say, that's a guy, I know my laptop's stolen. That's why I don't have it. And you, that picture didn't help me. So I think the high resolution will help in a legal sense. Because there's no doubt on 4K what you and I look like. All the little <laughs> blemishes, right? Yeah. And that's the way it goes. So I think there's a value in that. Is it at a price point that's affordable? No, I, I, there's no doubt that the technology around network transmission, compression, and storage is at an inflection point. And the answer is, is the technology is not ready for the resolution. Okay. You can t and so if you take a look at... We we'll are talk about H.264 today. H.264 is not fully effective to manage uh, 4K and beyond. So we're all looking at H.265. But even the hardware, the chipsets needed to decode multiple streams of that are not really commercially available, or at oh, least right. at least at a economic uh, level for our business. So that's uh, you know if you're into technology, it's a, that's a, it's a fun time because you, you, we all know somebody's going to go out and solve that problem. Yeah, they will, that's right. And if it's not a year, two years from now, somebody's going to do it, and then we're going to have a whole nother, uh, a whole nother arms race in the resolution space. But we are up against the ceiling right now uh, to a certain extent, and it'll be up to some uh, enterprising uh, some entrepreneurs to figure it out. That's right. Yep. So Video Analytics 1996, I have 30 Burl tape decks, and somebody stole the president's secretary's pack of gum off her desk, and I got to solve that case. And that took me days, days and days and days because I had to push every tape, I had to review every tape, and oftentimes we didn't solve it because we just couldn't. It's too much data, right? Now analytics are at the point where I can push a button and say, you know what, I need to know every Tuesday at three o'clock who's walking across this uh, viewfinder on the camera. Sure. I need to know who logged in and stuff. Tyco's got to be a leader in that, tell me about it. So uh, we did. We acquired a company uh, a number of years ago called Intellivid in the video analytics space. Uh, we main, we maintain a number of different patents in that space, uh, and focusing it on uh, a variety of different verticals. Retail <clears throat> is a great example where you know that sorting through that video is a difficult thing, uh, and a lot of the loss in a in a in a, in a retail establishment is done by internal theft. Right. <clears throat> so we're able to pull what we call suspicious transactions returns, voids, whatever they are, over a certain dollar value, and then automatically look into that video and see, is there a customer oh, there or not? So point of sales data is analyzed to match the video. Right. Oh, interesting. And, and, then, and then you see, is there a customer in this scene? We right. know where the customer should be. If you had a return or a void over a certain amount and cash was involved and there's only one person there, you've been ripped off. Right. And that allows that LP professional to figure that out in minutes and hours, not weeks and months. I assume the software sets up automatic emails, automatic text notifications, things like that. Sure. If you program it for your rule, yep. and it breaks it. That's fascinating. Uh, what's other uh, major trends in the market? What's going on with, I don't know, what, you know, what's the latest thing? What are people uh, gravitating towards sales-wise or interest-wise? Well, a couple different things. Uh, I would say uh, probably two things I'll touch on. One goes a little bit back to video analytics. Video analytics came on the scene to help that problem we just discussed. But now, in a new technology area, it has a different role. And that role is being able to more effectively manage high value video, because you're not only just piping it over your now closed network, you're sending it to the cloud. And so video analytics can now help sort out valuable video from less valuable video, and it takes on a whole new meeting. 
because now it's it's assisting in the economics of video transport versus just decision making of security well, that makes sense, yeah. So, so back in the day we had hierarchy storage management. We had a dumb terminal. It didn't save anything. You came into work, you logged in, you did something, it goes into the big giant data room with a thousand computers and that's how we ran things. And now it's called the cloud. It's old technology, you know what, old process, all right? I'm only concerned about it because if I'm a consumer or you know I'm the I'm the guy at the studio or running the big corporation, I like my data here. I'm not comfortable with the cloud still because of not you know the integrity of the guy that's managing it, but the no integrity from the guy who's trying to hack it. And I just feel I'm a little safer if I'm if I'm local with that. So what's your what are your thoughts on that? So different different enterprises handle that differently. So some will not allow data to leave their premises. Uh, some are okay with it uh, if they're gaining certain economic and and intelligence advantages. Uh, the thing about the cloud, one of the things about the cloud is it can now analyze information at levels that were inconceivable before. So the value coming out of data that used to be just video stored in just a hard drive. A bunch of pictures, you know, that's right. Right, yeah. now, it's, now it's data. And now you can tell uh, and triangulate a variety of different data points that you never would have had the time or ability to do. So, uh, so that's, why, that's why a lot of folks are focusing on the cloud. There's real value there. However, in large organizations, sometimes they've got private clouds. It doesn't have to be a public cloud. That's right, that's and, true. And so uh, we, we focus on being able to service those customers uh, regardless of where their cloud sits because at the end of the day, the value is, is the same. And we've got a lot of data that we're producing, whether that's data from video, access control, or intrusion. Uh, so aggregated, that's, that's quite important for our customers. What's Tyco doing in the mobile market? Well, mobile, and this gets back to my point about personal expectations in the business space. 18 months ago, you had to have a mobile app. Did the customer use it? Probably not. Right. But if you didn't have it, they weren't looking at you. Then- I have a mobile app, but I still can't get them to look at me. I'll <laughs> have to talk to you off, offline about that. <laughs> then, then that migrated over, over the last year or so to, uh, it's a must have and I'm beginning to use it. Now, as customers really do use it and use it in their end, everyday lives, they're beginning to see how it folds into their enterprise, and now they're coming back to the manufacturers and say, this is how I work. Tweak and, it. And I, yes, yeah. and I need you to make this fit my life. I'm really glad to hear that because I, I've been a technology user forever. Here's, I think, the consumer's challenge. I had a, a, a Samsung a three, and then a four, and then oh, I, I got to get a five, and now I'm debating a six. I don't have a lot of time, and it takes me time to relearn yeah the next thing, right? Sure. And so on a mobile app, if I look at the app and it's not quick and it's easy and it's streamlined, I say I'm going to go find another one. So I'm happy to hear that Tyco wants to take customer feedback seriously because the consumer really can make it better. You know, yeah. and, and then it becomes a real good partnership and you'll have that you'll have that customer forever if you have that interaction all the time. That's a great point. That's brilliant. And, 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 this, and this does end up and probably will end up changing how the industry deals with con c clients on devices because right now, Typically, I've got four releases a year, two releases a year. Oh, you need that changed? Okay, that I'll get that in my next release. Yeah, and the, the technology is here to do it on the fly almost, to do right. it quickly. That, yeah. That's The expectation is I need it customized for my business, right. not in your next release. And and literally, we've had customers, and it was very interesting to, to, to watch. One of the largest retailers in the world, uh, I will call them relatively old school, all analog, <laughs> uh, and they went from that world in the last 12 months to, I want an iPad. I, I'm moving my security guard out of the back. I'm giving him a podium in the front and I need this to be structured this way on this interface because this is how he's going to do his work now. Make it happen and they, and they jump full in. And, yeah. and, that, and, and, and that's the impact of that mobile technology from the personal world to the professional world. And it'll be very interesting to see how manufacturers deal with that. Because it's a big paradigm shift from, hey, here's my next release, you're important to me, I'll get it in there, to I now have to customize this for people to be able to do their jobs the way that enterprise sees in the changing environment that they operate. What's going on with integration at that level? So I got a mobile app and I want my Tyco uh, fire alarm system uh, when I'm sitting on the beach in Cancun on vacation, if it goes off, to be able to push a button and let the guard at the desk know, hey, we got to override that alarm. But I also want that to integrate with my video system, which is different. And so down Tyco, if I have all Tyco products, that's going to work, I know that. Sure. What if I, uh, I'm cheap on the camera products and I don't want the 
the latest 4K, I want something else. Can the integration work with your systems? Yeah, and, and, and that, that, yeah, the answer to that is yes. Uh, I think we are one of the most invested uh, organizations in integration. You take a look at our Secure product, the SDK that we offer uh, to the industry to integrate with uh, out of Secure is the deepest uh, SDK, most options open on any system. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, back in the day, we would you know, bring in some system to the studio, I think uh, you know, like Checkpoint or Lionel or some of these things, and they had a proprietary BIOS. And for my nephew in Seattle, that means they had a little chip and a little <laughs> code that says you can only use my stuff, all right? And I couldn't get it to work with a hit card. And a hit card works with everybody, right? So if, if Tyco's doing that, you guys are you're leading that. But I, I am glad to see here that a lot of other people are getting the integration thing when even, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, integrate, why would I want to integrate with your product? You know, you got to do it. Right behind me is our connected uh, applications portion of the booth. So we actually dedicate floor space at the show to go over all our integrations, uh, approach new partners, welcome new partners, and talk to our existing partners. Maybe Security Guy Radio mobile app should uh, we can check that out. Go check that out. All right. So, one more question. What's the next big thing in video? What are, what's uh, what's coming up? Well, the next big thing. I, I don't think, know how it can get any bigger than 7K, but I, maybe. <laughs> I think um, I think it's really about um, advancing beyond just the security realm. And now that data is in play, and large organizations understand that data is valuable. Data is data is the money maker. That's data, yeah. data is the money maker. And when you have hundreds of sensors in intrusion, in fire, uh, door contacts and access control. As a security provider, you are producing a lot of data. And I really think the next big thing is the application of that economy of data into security, the ability to generate, aggregate, and then make sense of all of that data uh, is really the next big thing, I think. You in, ever watch in Person of Interest? Uh, occasionally, yes. Okay, well, we're close, aren't we? In theory, we could do it if somebody put the time and money into it. We are getting to a point now where we can correlate trends and anomalies in ways that would have been totally science fiction just a few years ago. A few years ago, I know. So, a friend of mine at Microsoft says that you know, the boss stays up at night worrying about artificial intelligence. He thinks it's just going to happen. They're not going to invent it. It's going to invent itself. <laughs> and when you talk about integration and now we as humans are putting these electrical connections together to integrate systems where they weren't integrated before, right? Uh, it's very interesting. It could take on its own uh, its own it is. persona. And, and, and for us at Tyco, we, we've got uh, a whole brand around uh, Tyco On, which is our view into aggregating our data, opening that data to our customers, pulling in data from our, our uh, integration partners, and being able to give our, our customers insight to their enterprise in ways that they may not have seen before. Uh, it's amazing. It's going to be hopefully a benevolent Skynet. <laughs> Steve, thanks for talking Thank to us. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on Security Guy. Really appreciate it.